Hey there, uh, this is Leslie and Des, and we are here with Leah. We're super excited to have Leah here um, and uh, to hear all about her and her creative process and camp. Uh, we have our Joyfield Arts and Crafts virtual camp coming up. It is July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Uh, so we're just super excited about it. Um, and we have such a great lineup, Leah being one of the exceptional artists that we have teaching workshops. So we're super happy to be here um, with her. And do uh, you have anything? Um, no, other than maybe, you know, Leah, take it away. All right, take it away. We'll kick it over to you. All right. Well, a little bit about me, um, Pacific Northwest, born and raised true forest lover to, to heart. Um, the outdoors is where I get a lot of my inspiration. Um, and um, I have been a creator all my life. I was blessed to have a mother who was also very creative, is also, she's still with me. Um, <laughs> she's very creative and really encouraged and fostered that in me as a child. Um, and really saw that my creativity was kind of a different way of viewing the world than some other people had, even at that age. Um, so she really, really encouraged me to kind of follow that path and um, ended up going to art school and just really falling in love with all things creative, um, really getting my my feet wet in just about every media you can come up with. Um, I've done it all probably. <laughs> um, done, you know, painting and, and sculpture and collage and, um, you know, all sorts of, all so pretty much anything you can think of. I've done it probably. Glass work. Um, so I have just this love of creating. And for me, especially from about um, probably 13, 14, I really started to personally deal with a lot of emotional health issues. Um, depression started taking over and yeah, that's, that's fairly young, but I realized that art was kind of my way of processing through what I was going through. And that has continued for me since then. It's my way of just stepping outside of the feelings that I'm necessarily having um, from and working at it from an emotional standpoint rather than trying to use my brain through the whole thing. Um, I connect more with my whole self and in my, with what aligns with my soul rather than trying to figure out what the next step might be for myself. Um, and often that next step just kind of comes to me when I'm in the process and in the flow. Um, so for me, creativity is all about that healing process and kind of processing life as it comes at you. Um, which is why I decided to go ahead and become a creative life coach. <laughs> um, and really be there for others, also kind of processing and working through things that are happening in their life and helping kind of figure out the next steps through creativity. So I, I'm just blessed that I get to do not only that for myself, but help others and facilitate that, that growth for them. I love that. That is, I mean, wow, that is a huge bundle of, of information and, and, and juiciness that you shared with us. And I, and I really love all of it. Um, one, I love that your, your mom, uh, you know, kind of instilled something in you saw, saw that at an early age, that this was going to be, uh, an opportunity for you to have an outlet and, in a way to, you know, kind of explore your, your feelings and emotions, um, 
that is yeah. like so insightful. And, you know, that is like s- such a great gift. Um, <laughs> but that, you know, having that be part of, you know, now here you are as an adult and being able to, you know, roll that out into sharing with other people and sharing that gift. And, you know, I love that you're doing this creative coaching. Um, I mean, you just like, I love you. And I just, your, I love your, your, your whole vibe. I'm sorry. We got some lake issues going on back here. We got a very active lake storm coming up. But um, I do, I just, I, from the moment we first met, I just always felt like there, we had like a connection and um, you know, just sort of your whole vibe and you just, you just glow and ooze like this creativeness that makes me want to be a part of whatever you're doing. Um, So yeah, I love, thanks for sharing, sharing that because there is a lot about art that is actually really vulnerable. And, um, you know, we've been talking to a number of of artists today doing these interviews and there's, there's like such a common thread that, you know, art really is a form of therapy for many people to, um, to really work through um, whether it's like their emotions, um, issues, traumas, things like that. So, you know, yes, art can be about creating something or getting your hands messy or making something pretty, but there's also that aspect of it that I think is really, really for the individual, like uh, for doing something that is like really coming from your soul and being able to do something for yourself you know it's like that like some people journal some people do these other things but art can really be this way of um helping you maybe get through some trying trying times or challenging situations or working through feelings it's not always about creating a pretty picture you know and it doesn't have to be necessarily something that people share and I think that that's like really an important thing to let people know and put out there that you know art art and creating isn't just about going to um you know paint night and and doing what someone else did although that is fun and you know getting your girl pals and doing that drinking some wine is a great time um but there is also that the individuality of it and how it is there's really something for everyone and if you've never created anything or picked up a brush or done any kind of art or you've been doing it for 30 years um, there's still the opportunity to learn something and it's just all about I think just really um, you know like just jumping in and not not uh not letting not getting too in your head (laughs) yeah I think art can be really freeing creativity and creating can be really freeing um and I know that we have talked about it in the past that I really fully wholeheartedly believe that every single person out there is creative we just have to find the way we're creative yeah um the way that creativity comes through us and a lot of times, um, our critic, our in, inner voice kind of tells us, no, we're not good enough at this, or, oh, you know, no one's going to like this, or this makes me feel weird when I'm doing it. Um, and so actually, that's part of one of the classes I'm, I'm teaching at camp um, is about quieting that inner critic. Uh, because I mean, that's, for me, that has always been something that I struggled with, that self-esteem that kind of comes up and you just not, that that voice that just kind of keeps nagging at you and you're like, I don't really want to hear that, but it's got a really loud voice sometimes. <laughs> and being able to figure out ways to combat that voice and keep going and push through and you know, continue to create or just do, take the next step in just life. Um, you know, being able to be like, okay, no, I don't want to listen to you right now. I'm not going to listen. I have the power to quiet you <laughs> and move on. Um, I actually first started inner critic work about the time, about 14 or 15, truthfully. Um, 
with a very, very early therapist and realized that that was something I was going to be battling most of my life. And everyone I talked to says, yeah, man, that voice, I, there's, there's always something that it says to us. Some of us have louder and way more talkative voices than others. <laughs> um, but it's all about having those responses and being ready to respond when you do hear those, that voice kind of chime in inside you and that's going to stop you from making that progress. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think that, you know, we are often, we collectively, individually, um, are, are, you know, our worst critics, you know, mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, tend to get down on ourselves or judge what we're doing. And, you know, that is like part of, you know, what we are really wanting to put out there with this camp is that it's not about being perfect. It's not about knowing how to do it. It's just doing it. Like it's, it's something for yourself. It doesn't have to be for anyone else. It doesn't have to be for social media. It doesn't have to be for anyone to see. It's really about, it's about you. And, yeah. um, and there's a tremendous uh, sense of empowerment, I think that comes with that. And the uh, ability to try and like shut that voice that voice, uh, that voice down, you know, mm -hmm. and, and trust in the process. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm super excited about your classes. Um, Me and too. I'm, and the, uh, I'm really excited about the other one. <laughs> the last one? <laughs> um, so I'm not going to show my finished mask yet because uh, I'm actually still working on it. Okay. Um, it has been a long process. I don't always have a lot of time to do it. Um, and I really wanna, wanted to put my, my true soul into it, but I wanted to give an example of what we're starting with um, so that people kind of know where we're starting and where we're gonna go with it. Um, so this is one of the masks that I ordered um, to kind of show examples. And I, the reason I wanted to do full face rather than like, just you could do just over the eyes or you know just over the mouth like we're all wearing masks some of us are still wearing masks out in public I am and um you know that's kind of what got me thinking I was like well we're we're hiding kind of behind these these masks for COVID you know we have this almost anonymity and we really some of us are, are saying you know I'm, I'm much more comfortable because I'm not feeling as seen behind when I'm wearing my mask out in public. I'm not, I'm not as vulnerable. And there's the concept of, you know, where we wear these psychological masks that we have developed to protect ourselves. And so we're going to be taking physical masks and de decorating them, putting collage, um, I have one, actually, the, one of the examples um, is just done with paint pens. So it doesn't even require a ton of materials, which I really love. Um, this is really versatile activity. Um, we're gonna decorate the outside with how we want the world to see us and how we think the world does see us. Um, ideally, the way we wanna be seen the things we want to celebrate about ourselves and really show off. Um, and then there's always those things that we keep hidden and that are just for us. And so those are gonna be on the inside of our masks where we can celebrate those things that we don't necessarily wanna share because there, are, there will always be parts of us that are just for us or just for those of us th that are in our close circle that get to glimpse that from time to time. So um, I'm really excited on this. And this is one of those projects that I, people can run with. Like I said, I'm, I've been doing mine for weeks now, it feels like. Um, and it's just growing and continuing and evolving. And it just has a life of its own almost. So I'm really excited to see how people view themselves it's it's really 
a nice way to look at yourself and where you stand with your your feelings about yourself at the, at the time. I I'm you know I've been really ever since you put that up that that was one of the classes that you were going to be teaching. I was just like I keep coming back to it. It's interesting how um, you know life has a way of constantly reflecting back. And there are so many things that like keep coming back that I keep thinking about your, your class. And, um, and, you know, it was interesting because just as you were talking, like it just I, like really got me thinking again, um, you know, there's, because we all, we all do it. And, you know, we all wear our masks of um, whatever it might be. And, uh, but it really, you know, the camp, um, we really are making it wanting to be inclusive for teens and adults. And I couldn't help thinking when you were talking about that, like what a powerful thing for a teenager right now to be able to have someone guide them through that process. Because I I couldn't even imagine being a teenager right now. Like honestly, If any teens are watching this right now, I'm sorry to say, but I just think it suck. Um, <laughs> you know, I just can't imagine the stress that that some of these kids are going through and having to put up a front. Like I think, you know, when I was a teen, it was like that. But you know, this is why we wanted to offer this also to teens and adults because one, you know, giving giving kids the opportunity to do something outside of their normal circle, outside of class, outside of their families. Like they mm-hmm. could just do this on their own. Um, and they don't have to, you know, like they're only responsible for themselves and really having that sort of autonomy. But as you were talking, I was like, wow, what, like, what an amazing gift to give like a teen to like go through that process of saying, Hey, look, this is, this is all, these are all the things that you're feeling. These are all okay things. And you have the ability to, you know, you have the ability to recognize it, to change it, to shift it. And I think that that, with that mask, um, doing, doing that project and that, and creating that is really like a huge opportunity and well, for anyone really, but I just couldn't help. It was really hitting me at that moment for, you know, something for kids to just, really be able to see things in a different way and yeah I think that's pretty awesome so it's a great opportunity to kind of clarify who you believe yourself to be because we have all these things and expectations that others put on us yeah and so we get an opportunity to look at ourselves just simply ourselves with hopefully no one else's uh, viewpoint taking effect and you know take affecting it and uh also I think it's really powerful if maybe you're doing maybe someone wants to do it and I'm fully open to this if they want to do it in things they want to discard about themselves these are masks that I wear that I don't need anymore and that's a really powerful way to physically kind of let go of Maybe this is an identity that someone has put on me that I don't identify with and I don't need it. And, you know, that, you know, I'm, for me, I'm the fat girl. And a lot of times that's who I, how people see me. And I don't need to carry that with me. That's not who I am. Um, and I don't need it to affect my day to day and how I should represent and show up in the world. That, that isn't who I am. So I could put that on there and get rid of it, cover it up, let, let it go. Um, and it's a really great way to sort of release that expectations from uh, those expectations from others and really uh, embrace who we really are inside. Yeah. Oh, I mean that, well, that was beautifully said. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, we all, we all have our things and you get to a point in life, you either, you know, you got to let them go to grow or you just are going to sit with them and kind of stay in the same place and be stagnant. And, 
So I just, I love the idea that you could go either way with that, you know, just letting, you know, let stuff go that no longer served you. Um, And yeah, you know, there's the idea of how you think people see you, how you see yourself, and then like how you really are. And Mm -hmm. there can be three completely different things. So Or what you want to be in the future. Like maybe you're not quite there yet, but Maybe someone really wants to be outgoing and like in the spotlight for something and they're just not quite comfortable with that yet, but it could be a great first step in like in identifying (laughs) with that person out that part of their personality, because it's already there. It's just, yeah, okay, I, this is who I am. And you're taking ownership of that part of your, yourself. So it really, I find it super empowering and I'm, I'm just ecstatic. That's, I think the one, the class I'm looking forward to the most. Me too. Um, I, I really, I mean, I'm excited about the other two as well, but it's, there's so many possibilities with the masks. So yeah. many possibilities. I, I'm really excited about it. And I think too, that, um, the, I forgot what I was going to say, um, <laughs> Other than I was really excited about, um, no, but, um, dang it. I had something like, it was going to be really profound and blow everyone away. Uh, but I totally slipped my mind. <laughs> um, no, but I, I am really excited about that class and maybe what I was going to think, what I was going to say is going to come back to me. Um, yeah. And you have to, so you've got, you're doing the mast, inner critic, inner critic and then mantras mudras and meditation and I have been a meditator and studying meditation for probably 15 20 years and there are so many types of meditation that and when people think of meditation they often think of you know I'm going to sit here with my legs crossed and you know I'm going to chant OM, like not, you don't have to do that. That's, that's one way to do it. (laughs) Um, Many people find meditation in simple tasks. Walking meditation is a huge one that people use. There's all sorts of different ways to meditate. And so we're going to kind of go through some of those, experience some of those. We're going to do a few of them. And then mantras, which I think is really kind of a great, Um, kind of segue even between the one with the inner critic because you could take something you're working on with the inner critic and make it a personal mantra so we're going to be developing your own personal mantra um, and so that you've got something that you could use in your daily meditation or Maybe it's not going to be something that sticks around, but but you're going to learn how to make your own mantra that applies to you so that you can have that power to kind of have a little bit of additional toolbox, tool in your toolbox for, for that. And then the mudra part of it, mudras are a physical connection to a mantra that comes along. So or it's, it's like you're creating a, a physical reminder of a concept, if that makes, I mean, it's a little bit out there, but oftentimes people kind of, you know, this is the symbol when people are meditating, they do this. This is a traditional mudra. Um, and so that it's an anchor while you're meditating and you can, okay, well, this, you know, this has a certain meaning. This has, a, you know, a mantra that goes along with it. And that's kind of the idea. So you're going to, we're going to find a physical way to express our mantras so that when we are physically start just maybe living in the world and Hey, I'm going to put my hand on my shoulder. Every time I do that, it's going to be a, a physical trigger for my brain to think, Oh, that's that, that's my mantra. I can do this. I, like I can that. do this. I like that a lot. Um, so that's very cool I like that it really yeah so it's kind of nitty-gritty about meditation and mantra it's going to kind of go a little bit deeper into those things than um than a lot of people probably know 
um, because there are so many varieties of these things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be, we're gonna experiment a little bit with, with variety of them, and then you're gonna be able to pick your own and run with it, hopefully. Uh, I'm well, so excited. Yeah, me too, because, well, for me, like, sitting and, and meditating in what people would think of as meditating and just, you know, sitting and doing nothing and being with your thoughts. I'm one of those people that really feel I am incapable of sitting <laughs> and doing nothing. Uh, but I find like when I'm quilting, which is something that I enjoy doing, I find that I almost enter into what I consider a meditative state because I'm just sitting there just watching the stitches go by. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not thinking about other things. I'm just thinking, you know, it's like I'm just yeah. I'm just doing that. In and the that's flow the as we that, call that in the Yes. <laughs> Being in the flow. I know. I mean I, I feel like um you know we've talked to a couple of the couple of the artists today that are going to be you know doing workshops at camp and there's like a, a similar there's a sort of a lot of similarity in that you know when you're creating and you're in flow it does create that kind of meditative state and um, mm -hmm. I know for myself you know when I get into what I'm doing and when I'm painting and when I'm working I can have that and, and like one of the workshops that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, be doing the um, I call them like you know the meditative basket where mm -hmm. um, you know that we that I learned from Mandy and yeah. um, I mean that has really on a personal level has really helped me, um, you know, move I'm through. I'm still move. working on that same basket. Seriously, the same one from like two years Seriously, ago. It's like <laughs> this big. The bottom itself is like this big and it's right now about this tall. Oh yeah. So I mean, I love those. And I actually, I really wanted Mandy to, um, to be at camp and she had a lot of other things going on this summer. And so I was like, I wanted to do, I wanted to do the basket. I wanted to show, I wanted to share it. And, yeah. uh, and I love, you know, being able that I learned it from her and, um, something to be able to show other people because it is such a, a mindful technique and like the things that, um, that you're, all three of your workshops that you're speaking of, um, they they really delve on different aspects of the creative process, almost really in kind of that fully encompassing sort of the mind, body, spirit really um, is like all three are sort of touching on that in different aspects. Yeah. And I'm just super, super excited about it. And I keep telling Des as we've been talking today, I was like, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take all the classes. And then I'm like, Oh, but I have to work too. I have to I gotta, like, I got to work at camp. <laughs> so yeah. um, one of the things that's super great about camp is that over the three days, you know, each day there'll be three live sessions. So people get to like put their, their schedule together and pick the classes mm -hmm. they want. They'll have their morning class, their late morning class, their afternoon class, and they get to choose from, you know, a multitude of different, uh, different classes and workshops that will be offered at those times. And that goes for all three days. So there'll be the, the nine live live virtual uh, right. classes, but after camp, having access to all 30 of the workshops so that you can not only do the ones that you didn't pick, you know, during camp, but having that opportunity because I feel like just talking with you here in this moment, like, I just, I'm like, there's parts of this interview, like, I want to go back and listen to again. And I can only imagine like going through your class and the workshop and the, the things and the techniques and just the, the mindset behind a lot of that is like, it's probably more than having the ability to like go back and do it again and listen yeah. to it again you always realize you know the things that you missed um mm -hmm. you know you pick up a lot of awesome stuff when you're doing live things but having that capability to go back and listen to it again or do do more or add to it i mean that's just yeah. like um such a such an opportunity and i'm really excited about that part because we probably won't be able to be doing at least the two of us won't be able to be doing that many live classes because we've got the logistics of running camp but 
knowing that we get to go and you know go do all all of them afterwards as does everybody else is pretty exciting i um, i agree i think that is probably i think that's the most exciting part of camp for me truthfully is being able to have that access after the fact um it's awesome to be in the class live and be able to have that immediate feedback with pe with person the person that's leading it um, but being able to maybe catch something that you missed or just didn't have time for, because I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a conference or like camp before and been like, man, I want to take all of these and I just don't have time for these ones meet at the same time and I only can choose one. So being able to really go back and be like, oh, cool, I get to experience all of them when I can is just amazing. I know. Um, it, it, so. and it, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you're, you're at a, a camp, class, workshop, conference, whatever it is, and you can get so engrossed. And mm -hmm. then you have that moment of like, oh, should I be taking notes? And it's like, it's just knowing that you can be in the moment. And you don't have to take any notes. Because right. you can just go catch it. I mean, like you just be fully invested in the moment and be present and doing, doing you, doing your thing, making, you're making your stuff and knowing that, oh, if I need, if I need this again, I can go find it. So um, super excited I, about that. Part. I really love what you said about my stuff kind of being about the creative process because that's exact, that's exactly right. And I, I chose the classes that I just was going to teach on with that sort of in mind, because I knew that the people that were going to be attending are creative on all sorts of different levels. And then the people that are also contributing are creative on all different levels. Um, and I wanted to do something that could help support everyone. And we all have that inner critic and being able to come up with a mantra or meditation type thing. And the mudra could be as simple. Maybe you, like Leslie, I know you, you, I mean, you're painting glass all the time. So maybe your mudra is gonna be when you're painting your glass. I like that. And so maybe a certain stroke or a certain color even could be a trigger for you to come up, you know, how to release that mantra. And so you're getting that meditation aspect even deeper when you're doing the meditative art that you already do. Oh, I like that. That's good. So, you just really remind me what I was going to say when I forgot. <laughs> um, that was the, the, okay, the thing that you just brought up, that was one of the things I was going to say. It was like about, you know, there's um, lots of opportunities out there for people to find things to do, you know, YouTube or whatever, but, um, which is awesome. That's great. There's lots of, lots of awesome things out there, but part of, um, you know, part of the idea behind this, it's not just about, making art or creating something. It's really about, it's actually really creating the container for connection and community and knowing that you can come in and be supported by that. And I think that like with your talking about your workshops and the classes that you're doing, and I think that that was what, what I wanted to say was that, um, you know, when you're kind of diving into some of these things, just knowing that you're in a community that is supportive. And yeah. that is like really, I think a really huge thing. And as we've been, you know, growing our artist market and you've been with us from the first one and the second one, and now we're doing camp. And it's just like this idea of like, we're creating sort of like a community, a family of yeah. um, being able to be there for one another and, and being supportive. So it's not just like showing up and I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this class. It's really, there's so much more, um, more to it than that. And that's what I am really excited about is, you know, having the connection and community through creativity and, yeah. um, you know, being able to have a multitude of voices, uh, contributing to what we're creating. So I, and I think that your what you have to offer is so in alignment with that. I'm glad that I'm glad that that's the case, um, you know, because I really my my whole drive really is supporting people to be more creative and live a more creative life, however that manifests for them. 
Um, so yeah, that like I happen to have my my personal inner critic here. This has been my guy for since probably I began 14, 15. And he kind of morphs and changes, but he's always sort of been the same. And I, so I have all the things around, like not all of the things, because I could never come up with all of the things that he says to me. Um, but especially as artists, we deal with that kind of negative voice sometimes. And uh, so I really want to give people the tools uh, and the same thing with the mantras and the meditation, it's all support to help you be more creative and live a cr more creative, happy, fulfilled life. Joyful, filled life. The joy filled life. Yes. So, hey, Leah, tell everybody where they can find you. We know where to find you, but we want you to tell everyone else where to find you. <laughs> well, my big push I have, um, my business is Create, Grow, and Bloom Transformational Life Coaching. And I have a business page on Facebook. Um, that's the best way to reach out to me. Um, and kind of, I, I'm, I'm probably going to be putting together an Etsy page here shortly for some of my creations, my, my, ma my malas that I have sold on the um, artist markets, um, you know, and some of the other creations that I've, I make while I'm in my, in my healing process um, that we need to maybe find another home because <laughs> we all have, especially those of us that are creative, um, it seems to pile up. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. I have to apologize. Apparently it is now mowing time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, we've, we've gotten through most of the day with not too much noise, but you know, everybody needs to mow their lawn at seven o'clock. And uh, <laughs> I, don't so, hear it. I can't hear it. So you're okay. okay. Well, it's not coming through the recording. Okay. Well, awesome. So, um, so, um, so happy to have you being a part of everything. I just adore you. Um, you know, from the moment, that we, the moment that we met at sold us where it was like, every time I turned around or every time you turned around there, we were, <laughs> it was definitely meant to be that we were going to be in each other's lives. So I'm really, I feel grateful that this is how it is, has worked out that we are continuing to be around one another and creating and exploring. And, um, I just love that. So really excited for camp, really excited for your workshops and, um, yeah thank you so much for being yes. here, sharing and being vulnerable and honest that is like you know that is just it it really um i sometimes i think that we don't always understand how when we are in that place how it really is so helpful to other people so yeah. I, I wanted to say thank you for creating such a wonderful welcoming space for those of us that are maybe you know, creative or going through something or whatever, just hoping to share our creativity and, and joy with the world. I thank you so much for creating this space and, and fostering it and, and helping it grow, both of you. Um, I really appreciate that. And I know others do as well. So um, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm super excited for camp. I can't wait to meet all the wonderful, amazing people that are going to be joining us yeah. and to be, participate and see some of these amazing classes. I'm just so excited. Yes. So that many wonderful cool. things. We're super excited. So, well, thank you for your time this evening. I Yay. hope you have a lovely rest of your, um, rest of your night. And um, we'll be seeing you very soon uh, at camp. Yes. And, um, yes, I can't wait for your classes. And thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.